I made a video three years ago talking about my problems with the Presto card system in Toronto, entitled My Problems with Presto. It's a Presto card right here. You can see it here. Oh, how young and foolish. I even mentioned that I thought the topic was a bit controversial. I thought, looking back, that it was worth considering three and a half years later whether Presto had become a much better world-class level system. So let's look into it. What is Presto? If you aren't familiar, Presto is the Toronto region's regional fare card system, for the most part. I even previously referred to it as Toronto's smart uh, electronic tap fare card. I also quite rightly commented that it seems pretty simple, right? Turns out it's not at all simple. Now, I was in Ottawa last week, as you probably know if you saw last week's videos about the construction of the O-Train system, and I'll admit it was, again, really nice that I could use my Presto card when I was traveling around the province. And so it did remind me, hey, I made a video a few years back talking about Presto. Maybe we should update that to see how far, or how far we haven't, actually come. I really do think it was important that Presto became a better system, because if Presto is solid and, you know, well built out with lots of features, there is no good reason we should not adopt it province-wide. And I personally believe that we should adopt Presto province-wide anyways. I understand that there are extra costs because Presto is a really inefficiently designed fare card, but the province should just eat those costs and it should be deployed province-wide because it is so much more convenient and so much more attractive to use transit when you already have the card in your pocket and say I'm in Niagara Falls on the weekend or in Kitchener-Waterloo, I can just hop on the train or bus and it's easy, the exact same way I can when I'm in Ottawa. Of course, making it so that Presto is the obvious solution for all of these various transit systems to adopt anyways just makes sense. And it would be a bit of a nice one-up on British Columbia on the west coast of Canada because it would mean we would have a single integrated provincial fare card, which would be really cool. Now, fundamentally, the Presto architecture is the same as it's been for the past decade plus and the same as it was three years ago. And that is not a great thing. The way the Presto card system works is this weird hybrid between a remote database of fares and the actual data on the card. Basically, the card itself is storing amendments to the fares that the you know overarching system has. So how much money does this person have on their card, etc., within the card itself. But the limited memory of the Presto card has meant that historically even, some people had to carry multiple Presto cards because there wasn't enough data to store, for example, multiple student exemptions for lower fares. The idea behind the way that the Presto system was architected, originally for Go Transit, I believe, was that since parts of the Go Transit network weren't well connected to the internet, it would be good to have this sort of hybrid system so that if vehicles couldn't constantly be communicating with the internet, you wouldn't have people just suddenly getting on without paying. Now this is part of why they say it can take up to 24 hours for your Presto card balance to update if you, you know, reload your card online. This is because uh, some vehicles on the network which store the fare table, you know, the table that has all of the fare card numbers and the amount of money on them, actually needs to go back to its depot at night or in the morning if it's a night bus to uh, connect up to Wi-Fi, connect to the network and pull down the updated fare information. This is why if you just load your card directly from the app, if you have an Android phone, nice, uh, or from a fare machine or at a shopper's drug mart, which is the only other place you can load your card, then you'll have an instant load and that's because it actually loads the amendments straight onto the card itself. I will say in the past few years, the availability of Presto card machines has improved since all of the TTC subway stations have them and Chopper's Drug Marts all have them as well, but it's still not amazing. And part of the limitation to rolling it out more widely is that you need specialized equipment to directly load the card. Though it clearly isn't that specialized if you can actually just use a phone to do it. So it's a bit strange. Now, a lot of these problems are also because to some extent, as the Presto card system was being developed, the basic architecture and design was kind of going out of style. And instead of leapfrogging to the new latest and greatest technology, Presto was built out on an older architecture design. And so the system's backends are actually slowly kind of being renewed and rebuilt behind the scenes, which is kind of an interesting thing. Look up, there's been lots of articles talking about that. 
Now the whole issue of needing a specialized device to write onto cards is annoying, but New York's OmniCard, which I talked about a couple months ago, gets around this by putting a barcode right on the front of the card, which allows any cashier at a small convenience store to scan your card and load it, which is a super smart design feature. Now, to be completely clear, there have been improvements in the last couple of years. One of the biggest of which is that the TTC, Toronto's local transit agency, who to be fair has had control of some of the conundrums with relation to Presto, actually started allowing its readers on buses and streetcars and at fairgates at subway stations to actually tell you when you've paid how much money's on your card and that you have paid a full fare or whether you've transferred. This was something they were reticent to do previously because of privacy concerns whatever that means, which is seemingly an issue that doesn't exist anywhere else where they use smart fare cards. That said, now that we actually have it, it's really nice and it's a well-implemented feature. And it's particularly nice to just tap and see that you got a free transfer because I think that helps advertise the usefulness and affordability of transit to riders. Now, the machines at subway stations and other locations now also can dispense temporary Presto tickets, which are pieces of paper with the circuitry inside them that is similar to a Presto card, which is made out of plastic, that allow you to buy a single fare or a day pass just in paper ticket form. These are okay, but the fact that they can only be used for the pass you purchase them for and then they have to be disposed of is really bad, just creating e-waste essentially. In other cities, these temporary tickets act more like a temporary card. They break down over time, but you can reuse them for a few weeks at a time before you might want to consider getting a new one. And that seems like a really good approach that we should probably adopt here. The other issue with the temporary paper tickets is that, as far as I know, they only work for TTC fares, which means you can't just load a general Presto ticket uh, if you were, say, staying in Toronto for a week and use it across the region, you'd have to buy a Presto card for that. The paper tickets cannot be loaded with general funds. They can only be loaded with specific fares. That's a really silly policy, but Toronto's fare system in general is insane. So it's not maybe that surprising. You might be wondering if contactless or mobile payment is available, and sadly, it's still not. Short of a pilot program on the Up Express, which I've used and works perfectly fine. Now you see, this is a bit of a multi-part problem. Historically, at least, the Toronto region used a number of different kinds of card readers for the Presto system. Now, some of those readers, particularly the ones used on the TTC, which were some of the latest to get rolled out, uh, the Presto card was rolled out on kind of the lower traffic systems first before working up to the TTC, don't apparently have the capability to work with a credit card or a mobile phone, which seems questionable. Now, this is being resolved, albeit really, really slowly. Ottawa, who I mentioned also uses Presto, has a kind of interesting workaround, which is that one of the fare gates at the rail stations has a signage on it that says, you can just tap your credit card at this fare gate. And it's a bit of a weird workaround that only one of the fare gates can be used for open payment, but hey, that's a nice feature. It's worth also noting that these are very similar fare gates to those used in Toronto. Now, around the greater Toronto area, the non-Toronto local transit and bus rapid transit services, as well as GO stations, are starting to upgrade their Presto readers. In fact, most of them have already been upgraded. You can tell if you have a new Presto reader on your bus or at your train station if it is the black design. And as I've been riding around the region, I've been seeing a lot of those readers at stations and on buses. So that rollout is clearly going well. And those readers have the contactless logo right on them. So they should have the capability once we decide to have that functionality. Of course, though, as I mentioned, Toronto, you know, the biggest city in the region, since it installed its fare readers last, will probably be the last to get these new readers. And so the ability to have open payment where it would be most useful is going to be delayed until we actually have those, which is really frustrating. Now, I want to get back to the fare gates bit. I mentioned it briefly in the previous video, but I really think it's worth highlighting how bad the fare gates we have in Toronto are. Now, to be fair, Ottawa does have a very similar model. And the design in Ottawa is slightly better because the fare gate itself is longer, which means that as you're walking at a normal pace through the fare gate, you don't actually hit the paddles, you know, the open close part as you're walking through the fare gate. Something that is a real issue for me, at least at my regular walking speed in Toronto. This is an even bigger problem because the paddles of the fare gates in Toronto are incredibly flimsy. They are just like a thin sheet of plexiglass and I've seen them get broken and people just walk straight through them and everything. And that's really not great. Again, Vancouver has a better designed fare gate, which is really reminiscent of the ones used in Sydney as well as London with thicker, heavier paddles. 
though a design like those used in Paris where the paddles slide up really fast would probably be ideal. Or even the Japanese fare gate system where fare gates remain open until you walk through and if you don't pay, they close on you. Which like most things in Japan is incredibly well thought out and totally great. Now, one of my biggest frustrations in my video talking about Presto previously was the Go Fair system, where you have to tap in and tap out at your starting and ending stations. This system overall seems fine until you get encouraged into setting a default trip. A default trip is basically a cutout that allows you to tap in, but not tap out, assuming you're gonna get off at Union every time, which again is one of those ways Go Transit is incredibly Union Station centric. The issue with this system is that if you're like me and you sometimes get off at a different GO station, you actually have to tap your fare card, hit a button on the reader to override your trip, and then remember to tap out at the final station. This kind of system is just incredibly confusing. I understand the value of having a default trip functionality, I guess. The fact that all of the different rail systems in the region all use various different forms of fare payment is incredibly frustrating and just one of the many layers of confusion built onto the Toronto fare system. So I really hope that we can all decide, hey, rail is gonna be tap in, tap out, or hey, rail is gonna be tap in, flat fare. Probably doesn't make sense, but we would at least decide that there's a single model. Super frustrating. The saddest thing I have to report is that none of the little things with Presto have really changed. While Compass and Vancouver and other systems around the world have introduced things like new form factors, Compass has mini Compass cards and Compass wristbands that you can wear on your wrist, Presto is still only available in card format and physical card format because as I mentioned, there is no mobile version. At the same time, Presto hasn't been integrated into other mobility services. I haven't talked about it a ton, but Bikeshare Toronto is a really cool service that's been widely deployed across the city. But one of the big issues with it is the painful process of actually undocking a bike if you don't regularly use the system. Being able to tap your Presto card would be awesome. Of course, another useful feature of the Presto card could be using other mobility services, like taxis, for example. None of these kind of functionalities exist, and I know that it's probably optimistic to assume that we would have that kind of service, but if we want a good fare card and mobility payment ecosystem in Toronto, we should have that functionality. The final and maybe most annoying issue with Presto I have personally is just the slow reading. It isn't really as much of an issue I find with the fare gates at subway stations, but particularly on buses and on streetcars, the Presto card is just painfully slow to read. And so if there's a line of people getting into the vehicle, you have to pause and wait and tap your card after each person. And this slows down boarding and is just annoying and who knows, maybe you'll accidentally not pay because you thought you did and then get a giant fine, which sucks. Now with all of the stuff I've talked about in the video, you might think that I really hate Presto and that's not really the case. For me personally, Presto is actually fairly seamless. I have auto load set up, which means that the Presto card system just reloads my card automatically every time I get to a low balance and it just charges my credit card and I don't pay for passes or anything like that because I use all kinds of different transit agencies and do all kinds of different trips across the region and we don't have any form of an integrated fare system, which is annoying, but at least I don't really have to think about it. I just tap my Presto card. The point is though that it's important for me and for other transit advocates, probably you watching this video, to think about other people's use cases. Presto might be great for me and maybe it isn't so bad for you, but it needs to be so much better. Thanks for watching.